Hey, what's up? Caleb Basie here. Today we're going to be looking at getting tracking information from Buju to After Effects because, let's face it, After Effects tracking sucks. We're going to be using Buju's powerful features to simplify the whole tracking process. We're going to be covering the basics of tracking, a couple methods of defining geometry, uh, some ways to add shadows, uh, adding text and non-text objects, and just basically to how to make these things look just a little more realistic with, like, blur and motion blur and stuff like that. So if you want to follow along, you can click there for assets. All right, now uh, let's get started here. So, uh, you know, you got your assets up and uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to take that file right there and you're going to drag it over into After Effects. Yeah, just like that. All right, so the next step is making a TIFF sequence uh, rendered out at 24 frames per second. You're just going to take that raw footage and drag it into a new composition. And you're going to change the composition settings to 24 frames per second so that it's rounded uh, because that's the way Buju likes to work with uh, footage. So. Now if you shoot at like 29.97 round it to 30 or whatever. Change it to say 24 frames per second convert, like, yeah. And when you go to export, you want to make a new folder. So you have you know, all your TIFFs in one folder. And uh, yeah, you're going to change the uh, output to TIFF sequence. And then after that, you're pretty much ready to go, you know, just double check everything, make sure you're at 24 frames per second, and that you have the whole timeline there. And I, uh, when I render, I use BG Render. It's a script you can get from AE Scripts. Uh, I think it's aescripts.com, but it's a great little thing. It lets you, you know, work in After Effects while you're rendering. Uh, I love it. But, you know, you just... Go ahead and render whichever way you want. Uh, for BG render here, it has you save your file before you render. Um, so just go ahead and, uh, you know, it's always good practice to save your files anyways. And while that's uh, rendering out, you can go ahead and open up your copy of Buju. And once everything's rendered out, you go to the sequence, TIFF sequence folder, and you click on the first uh, TIFF file in the whole sequence, and click apply, OK, cancel. Yeah, now you're going to change the sequence set settings, go to uh, camera and sequence, change it to 24 frames per second so everything's squared away there and you're just gonna scrub through here and you know you're just kinda checking for areas that might give you problems uh, I know with this piece of footage in particular that towards the end there's a uh, whipping pan motion to the right and uh, you know that's gonna mess up the pan. Some things you can do is uh, to prevent motion blur like you see here is uh, you know obviously not whip panning but also shooting at like 1 60th or above that to reduce the motion blur. So you know you're just gonna go ahead and, uh, and uh, click track features and you don't need to worry about the advanced features. You're just going to press start. And Buju's going to do everything it needs to do. And yeah. So after that, you're going to click. Yeah, just kind of scrub through there. And, uh, you know, make sure everything's looking pretty good. No areas where it's the tracks have just all, like, dropped out. But you're going to click Camera Solve and check the Camera Smoothing option box down there. And, uh, yeah, it uh, does the Camera Solve. You just kind of kick back and relax. So that uh, the Solve's done now. 
and uh, yeah, you know, you're gonna wanna, there's like four solves for this one because of the motion blur, so you're gonna click on the first one and that lasts pretty much for the entirety of the clip until it pans, which is going to be good for our purposes. You can always, uh, especially for these whip pans, you can pretty much just manually keyframe it like right there, and you know, the motion's so fast you can barely notice it, you can uh, do that in After Effects, of course. So, yeah, just kind of showing you the different solves there. And one thing you can always do to help with your solves is go into 3D Task and click Automatic uh, Lens Distortion Correction and then uh, let that do its thing, then retrack and then resolve, but that won't work for this piece of footage. I've already tried that out. But you know, you can always try different track settings if you want to get it, uh, try and get it to where it's all one solve, but for this, this track will work pretty good. Okay, so on to scene geometry. So uh, I clicked the little lasso button down there and I'm just highlighting all the blue dots here. This is, uh, there's a couple ways of defining geometry. I'm doing the planar geometry right here. I'm just pressing Command on the Mac uh, to get those little extras in the left corner there. You're going to uh, add a new uh, coordinate thingy and uh, yeah, make it a Z, X, X, Z plane, and you're just going to add that. And update coordinates, add an origin, and as you'll see here, doing it this way, you know, it kind of gives you a rough idea for the scene. It doesn't work, it doesn't work out that well for this scene in particular. Um, you know, you got the whole world skewed, but you can always, like, rotate the world as I'm showing you right there. I think it works better for like scenes that are larger with, you know, ground areas, you know, the size of fields or um, just bigger areas, I guess. But, uh, you know, you can always adjust and rotate to better suit your whatever. And then, of course, you always want to add a proxy object to check your track. I like adding arrows because you can see kind of like what's going on in the area directly underneath it. You can kind of focus in on a feature and really kind of see the shifting that's going on. Well, this, this track looks pretty steady, but... Um, I'll go ahead and show you another way to do this using uh, just linear points. But this is looking pretty good, so you know, you could just go with this if you really wanted to, but I'm going to show you another way. Now you want to delete that uh, plane definition. Uh, oops, can't do it in here. You got to go to the task view. Open that drop down, then delete it. Now you're just, um, I always look for the yellow dot. I'm not totally sure if that's the correct way, but when uh, you're looking for linear points to define in geometry, I'm always looking for the yellow dots. And uh, it's going to be pretty easy to get two in a straight line on this one because you got, you know, the lines on the side of the box to help. Uh, just kind of looking okay here we got our X coordinates open the scene geometry back up add a new definition for the X um, access now we're going to add a Z access There's our z-axis, connect them. You're just using the command and uh, left click button to highlight those points. Forgot to connect these 
x access points connect those update the coordinates and if you check your 3d geometry that looks no, it looks a lot neater than the uh, plain geometry but you know that's just two ways you can go about doing that don't have to do as much work on this one you know going the second route but to each his own go ahead and add a test object I like to stretch out the arrows so you can really see what's going on down there just kind of find a, a, or a little scratch on the surface there to kind of see what's going on okay this is looking really good now it's time for the camera export so you're just going to go to camera export and you're going to choose the after effects.ma setting you're going to uncheck the default leave the uh, start at one change the null size to point like zero one and the scale seen by 100 uh, yeah you want to do that and then you export it and now you're ready to work in After Effects with your tracking data.